I just wanted to um, start off by asking a little bit about your relationship with the director, Elvira Lind. Um, how did you come to make this movie together? I know she did the cinematography on the film, so maybe if you could talk a little bit about the origins of the film and how you work together. First, thank you for being here and for the support. And I met Elvira through a dear friend of mine and she had just finished filming her previous film and we got talking about being a girl and passion and physicality and sensuality and sexuality, and she said, you're next. <laughs> and she bought a ticket, and she flew to Israel, and we started filming. It was just her and the camera, and me and her. And so did you talk about, um, you know, what would be the circumstances where she would be allowed sort of into your intimate space, um, or, you know, what were the agreements that you talked about before starting the film? And then maybe talk about how much awareness you had of her and the camera mm -hmm. once you started into this project. Uh, I'm usually not someone that shares my personal life on social media or anything. So I told her, if we're gonna do this, we go all in. And, uh, it helped because I respect her so much as an artist and as my friend. So she was there for short periods. And of course she was there in the moments that you wanna be alone, be alone the most. And she was just doing her job. She has this incredible way of disappearing once she gets a camera in her hands. And most of the stuff that you saw I honestly don't remember her even filming it. The moments I remember her there, they didn't make it in. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Um, and so talk about this decision to leave Batsheva. This is like a huge risk. Um, you know, you could keep going and continue to tour the world and be in this community, but you really stepped off and took a risk. You also were teaching and um, working in this dance language. Talk about what is the process then in, in the dance, dancer's world, breaking out of a, a dance language and a company like this to develop your own solo career, and what did it take to do that? Um, I, I think when you're someplace for a while, you're kind of waiting for that aha moment of, now I know it, now I'm supposed to go. Now I'm supposed to do the next thing. And one day I realized that moment is not going to come. And I have to make it come. And that's when I knew that it was time to go. Because I love the place so much, because I love dancing there and living there, I knew that it was gonna have to be my own yeah. Step. <laughs> uh, in terms of like leaving the language, Gaga, the language that we practice at Pacheva, it, it will always, it's always with me. It is what I also want to share coming back. So I will continue to do that. So, um, of course, we all noticed San Francisco being featured in this film, and I know there's some dancers here in the audience tonight. <laughs> so maybe talk about your relationship to this city and what you're doing here now, and um, just a little bit about okay. the scenes that we see in the movie yeah. that were shot here. Um, I've been teaching at the San Francisco Conservatory of Dance. Thank you for being here. Um, for the past, almost 10, every summer I would visit the city, visit, yeah, and teach and set the repertory of Ohad. And so it felt, and it's run by a woman named Summerlee Radigan, and she's been a big supporter of my work. And 
you know, she was like, come here, you have free studio space. And that felt exactly where I needed to land. Not to land into New York, just on running the race instead of actually having time mm -hmm. to digest what the hell just happened. Yeah, so I mean, speaking of what the hell just happened, you know, the, the film premieres at Tribeca and wins all these amazing awards. There's a lot of attention on the film. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what you're doing now and mm -hmm. how you think the film will integrate with, you know, what comes next? I, I really don't know how it will, <laughs> what will happen. I think Something that was so beautiful at Tribeca was I could really feel that it, it is a huge collaboration between Elvira, myself, and Adam, the editor, and how many different lenses it travels through. And that was beautiful to see how that was received. Now, I'm in New York. Orr is moving to New York. He flies like in two days. <laughs> He got into acting school, and he will start in September. <laughs> and we'll start a new page, and I'll continue to teach, and he'll study, and we'll make work together, and keep dancing. Excellent, I love that happy ending <laughs> to the romance <laughs> side of the film. Um, and of course, it's ongoing, as you say. So um, another question that I have is just the role, you know, the expectation of a woman's career in the dance world. The, the film starts out and you're, you know, having dinner with Ohad Naharin and you're saying, I'm leaving, and he asks, how old are you? And, you know, it comes out that you're 30 as he's taking the food off your plate and eating it. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, you know, what does it mean in the dance world, you know, for women and, um, you know, sort of the trajectory um, in terms of a, the dance career for women? I'm finding out. I'll know much more in five years. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I'm going to... For me, there's really no choice. I'm gonna learn how to figure it, like I'm gonna learn what it takes as I go along, and I'm gonna dance until I die, you know? And whether or not that, that I have a job or not, or I'll make my own jobs, and, or I'll dance in my wheelchair, or I don't know what. <laughs> Excellent, I don't. I, I don't wanna get caught up in what you know, the dance world thinks, or the age limits it's supposed to be, or when I'm supposed to do that, or when that, I'll. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I guess uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you about is your relationship with your mom. Um, it's a pretty amazing scene in the film when she's watching you dance, and um, she must have gone on a long journey with you as you've developed and then as she's come along with you. Can you talk a little bit about your family and how they're responding now to the work that you're doing? Um, I, you know, I left home when I was 11 to go study dance and I never came back. So I'm coming back now and I have hopes that it will just, you know, pick up from this experience and I think her being able to see the film and hear reactions is helping. Mm -hmm. um, we are partnering with ODC mm -hmm. and um, you'll be performing a study on effort there on August 2nd. Can you tell us a little bit about the performance and your collaborator and um, I, I think you know, I'm definitely going to be there, and I hope you will all join me there to see uh, this performance live at ODC. Uh, yeah, I will be at on October 2nd. It's a new collaboration with, or I, it's been a year that uh, the violinist Kier Gold Gwilt and I have been working on a new version of a study on effort that is more of a duet than a solo. 
And it, it bas it's kind of distilling from what you saw from the process and the, that show into something else. So you'll see familiar elements, but also in a different way. Okay, great. I know there's some questions from the audience, so let's go ahead and open it up. Um, we have some people with microphones that'll come and find you. So I have one in the center towards the back. Hi, thank you so much for your film and performance. It was, it was very moving. Um, I'm curious to know what you think of your relation to art as performance generally, or if you think of yourself um, as primarily in the contemporary dance world, because for me, your art evokes um, Marina and Brabovich or uh, these other very vulnerable um, artists who connect on that level. Thanks. Mm. I try not to think in labels in that way. I'm learning and trying to figure out where my art falls into. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, an sorry. another one towards the center. Uh, hi. Um, first, I really want to commend you for being so available for the filmmaker. Uh, you. You're as committed to her project as you are to your own, and I really appreciate that, and that makes for this very moving film. My question is about the, the genesis of the project. So you told Elvira that you're going to leave, yeah. and, or, or you didn't. So how did, what made her decide to make the film, and how was she there at the moment that you're telling Oha that you're leaving? So uh, the... Originally, the plan of what she wanted to make was very different. She wanted to start just, I think she wanted to, if I remember correctly, she wanted to do a documentary about, about a dancer and another woman who doesn't dance and finding the parallels between the two. And when she got there, I had just met Orr and that was just starting and I was just deciding to leave and I told her, hey, I'm going to go talk to Ohad. And she's like, I'll be there. <laughs> so it kind of unfolded as it came. A friend filmed the uh, departure scene because she couldn't make it there. So it was, it was all unfolding in real time. OK, another question towards the center back. Um, I'm curious about when you left Israel, you'd spent a third of your life there, and I'm wondering what the experience was living in Israel as an American artist, and now that you no longer live in Israel, what of Israel stays with you? Right when I landed to Israel, immediately I landed into a huge, amazing family of dancers and artists and that really took care, we really took care of each other. And it was definitely a shock. It will forever have changed me. The sense, like, the sense of time there was different. The sense of pleasure was different. I was totally out of my league. I would go to, uh, I would start Gaga class and they would say, connect, to, connect your effort to your pleasure. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? It was, I was, I was lost, but in the best way. Now, I, I think because Bacheva is also a bit of a bubble, I never really felt like I'm an American in Israel. Everyone was so warm and accepting and generous. And I love them. I, love, I loved all of them. <laughs> Coming back, I miss Israel all the time. I miss the smells there, I miss the food. But it's with me, it's in me, it's my body contains those memories and it will only inform the next step. Okay, 
Okay, another question in the center. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on that last question. This is a Jewish film festival after all, and um, I'm really interested in knowing what it was like being a Midwestern shiksa in Israel in a relationship with a Sabra. Sorry, I missed the last part. With an Israeli Jew. <laughs> um, sometimes I feel the pressure, you know, his parents for instance, with Or, he'll always say, they don't care, they don't care. But somewhere, I feel that they do. Tell the story about <laughs> Or's mother and um, what she wants to do when he comes to move to oh, New York. So you know. That'll go, I think people will be interested. <laughs> okay, uh, so you know, like a, Jewish mother, every Saturday, we'd get a whole refrigerator of, sh of food <laughs> for the whole entire week. And when I was back with him, I said, I tried to talk to his mom about it, that I think maybe just not as much food so that Or and I can try and learn how to cook together and budget and that can be part of us. And she didn't listen. And she continued to bring the food every week. And it's amazing food, so I'm very thankful. But this, now that he's moving to New York, uh, she broke down crying, saying, what about the food? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to make him food? She wanted to hire a chef to cook, come and cook her recipes for him. And I said, I'll learn them, but I'm not, you know, I won't do it right, but it's my, minor, minor struggles that, of course, echo, but minor. So we have a question over here on the left. Hi, Bobby. What is your favorite part of the film? I love it when Orr rescues the chair. <laughs> okay, there's another question over here on the left. Hi, Bobby. Uh, do you ever feel like you'll make work with Orr? Yep, yeah. that's the plan. Okay, another question on the left. Hi. Um, how did it feel being so vulnerable, vulnerable and raw in your performances versus watching yourself be so vulnerable and raw in the movie, in the performances? Um, in the performances, I feel that I, there's not really a choice. It's, it's what I'm, it's a force inside of me that goes beyond what I want it to be, what I think it should be, um, what I hope it to be. And I allow that force to just amplify and become stronger than any insecurities. In terms of watching that, I'd, I, I, it's very difficult for me. I was sitting outside, like, <laughs> I went to the bookstore. <laughs> I, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's scary. Is that it? Okay, I wanted to ask one final question. Um, you know, so much of what you do is not about words, it's about emotions and about feelings. And so, um, it's interesting in a film where, you know, there's more words to describe yeah. what it is that you're doing. So what was it like for you to be, to need to talk about the work versus actually just, you know, experience it and have audiences experience it? It felt very organic, very smooth. It felt, you know, it's much easier to talk about my work, not in the situation like this, but, um, you know, I connect a lot of times words to my movement 
and movement to my words and it felt organic. It's part of the it's part of the it's part of my work to find the words and the poetry to describe it and to talk about it. Great. Well, I hope you'll all join us on August 2nd at ODC for the performance, and we'll be in the lobby for a few minutes afterwards if you'd like to continue the conversation. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You.